on social media that that has this and they want this now and it's you know because we're in that that culture where everything is so fast i can get the answer to anything i want in a matter of seconds or i can you know pull up information in a matter of seconds and then for me not to be able to have a business you know that dream i want it now whereas it might take me 10 years to build that to the point where it's my dream um, and i think there's just a disconnect there that people don't fully realize that they don't have to have it now they need to build it to where it is yeah I've, I've heard people say that it's a microwave society and i think that's yeah. a pretty accurate description yeah. because we do we want to you know wham bam now mm -hmm. and you know we want to just skip all the hard parts and there's very few people that get to skip the hard parts and you know as amazing as that may seem like that sounds you learn so much during the hardships i've learned more from the times that i tripped and fell on my face or you know, I, I'm also, I've talked about this on the show that I'm a jumper, you know, I'm more of a hesitant jumper now because I have got burnt a lot, <laughs> but I'm a jumper and that's not necessarily a bad quality if it's honed in too correctly. Um, but, you know, I've been burnt a lot from mm -hmm. jumping and, but I've learned from each and every one of those times and I'll, I'll never stop being a jumper because I, I you know, I like being a risk taker, you know, yeah. if, if you just stay in one spot, you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. And I would rather trip and fall on my face and say, okay, well that hurt a little bit and then get up and yep. keep going. Yeah. I mean, I love what I do in the world of Google. Brandon is, you know, jumping on board and has jumped on board for yep. almost two years now with that with me. And it has been an amazing ride that I've been able to take with Google over the last four and a half years. And to see everything that's happened to the Google My Business page. But my dream still is to be that life coach for people in the world of business mm -hmm. because for women especially you have so many outside things that play a role in you that you question am i doing mm -hmm. the right thing but even for young kids i mean you have parents who think you should have gone to college you should go to college and you should get this eight to five job and you should do this and do that because they did it mm -hmm. but you come out of college with this entrepreneurial mindset especially you and you know and then you get involved with us crazy girls and i mean now <laughs> that, know you know, I, I mean we're already like okay brandon's already at like job like a uh, business owner of yeah. like business number three now yeah. i think or? so did you name your first business the the one that you work for the cutting Fire? wood firewood did uh, you yeah, name it, it? fireside firewood fireside firewood yep. see i like that that's good yep and it was it was kind of just on a whim um I, so i grew and you were up, 14. i was 14 um and i played really competitive baseball so the idea, and we had just cut a driveway. We were we were uh, building a new house. So we had cut this driveway, and there was a whole bunch of wood down. So the thought was, I'm going to swing an axe because I want to strengthen my back to swing a baseball bat. You yeah. Know, that was the idea. So it yeah. had nothing to do with there's a market for it. It had yeah. nothing to do with <laughs> I need to make money. It yeah. was, it was a selfish reason to get stronger. Yeah. Um, and after splitting a couple loads, I realized. Hey, I can I can sell this stuff, you yeah. know. And again, I was in sports. I was in school. I, I was only fourteen, so I couldn't go down and work at McDonald's, um, even if I did have the time to, uh, which I definitely didn't. Um, but you know, wood was something I could do after dark or mm -hmm. on the weekends, and you know, after practice, before school, I was out splitting wood before school, which um, my parents didn't appreciate necessarily but understood yeah um they liked the drive but they didn't like being woke up at 5 a.m oh, yeah. uh, or with, with me outside <laughs> with <and> all that. <laughs> um, sorry but anyway so so yeah that was it was interesting you know you show up to a a customer and your mom's driving the truck because yeah. dad's at work and mom's a, mom's a school teacher so um you know the the summer she drive me i have no license no permit even and I show up and, and I'm handling these deals and the guy looks at me like, uh, I think you're a little young to be doing this, aren't you? And I said, well, do you want your wood or not? You yeah. know, and, and that was just kind of the mindset I had is no, I'm not too young. Yeah. I, I did your service for you. What do you mean I'm too young? I'm doing it. Um, I think it's unexpected from people. Yeah, yeah, and it is, especially now yeah. with a manual labor job like that. You know, if I walked into somebody with what we're doing now with Google related, they're like, oh, you're a young kid. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. You understand technology. Yeah. Um, but especially from a manual label, that was that was a hurdle I didn't realize was there. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, when I started it, it wasn't had no intention of it being a business. 
Um, and then I realized, hey, I can scale this. And I was, you know, really involved in campgrounds. Um, we camped my entire life, still do. Um, that's actually, I bought a camper when we went out west. So that's, that's always been part of my life, um, being outdoors and being in those campgrounds. So I started marketing to campgrounds specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and then actually, I had so much demand that I couldn't sell during the winter. I had to only do summers when I was home from college. Um, and I actually, I ran it until uh, the day before I turned 21. Um, so my, you know, May 25th, um, I, I closed down Fireside Firewood uh, solely because, you know, I, my summers I didn't have weekends or, um, you know, fr Friday night, date night, I guess what we were doing, you yep. know, we were, <laughs> we were unloading wood. Yeah. Uh, because no that's, wonder you're single. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the thing with, with owning your own business that they don't tell you is it takes Friday night, that's what you're doing. Yeah. Um, if that's the business you chose. Yeah. And, and there were times I would tell customers like, hey, I can't do Friday. I've already got plans. Yeah. Um, and and I've lost clients because of that. So it's a decision that you choose. Where am I going to put my time at? And I think that's with anything, but especially as a business owner. Well, and I think you you just said it is. Everybody thinks about you know the glorious parts of owning a business. I'm gonna you know because we see all this stuff. I'm no. sitting on the beach with my laptop and working my own time. And yeah, that does exist. But it's also the fact, especially I know in my experience as a mom, I'm you know, do, wearing the hat of a mom, wearing the hat as a wife, trying to get the dishes done, the food cooked, and dealing with the garden, and coming in and answering calls, and you know, it's it's definitely not glorious. And um, I mean, there's been moments where I've been answering calls from home, and I've shared this before, so this is not a secret. But you know, a client will call that isn't necessarily one that I want to answer with my kids like beating each other to mm -hmm. death in the background. So I'm like, crap. So I'm like <laughs> running in my master bedroom, locking the door, running in my bathroom, locking the door, and then I'll stand in the shower because, you know, it's very echoey and kind of like office-y yep. sounding in yep. the shower. I'm like, hello, <laughs> you know, Just and where there's like complete chaos. Like, I mean, like they're like murdering uh, each other outside the door. Oh, it's home. bad. Yeah, yeah, they're like, boom, 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 mom, you know, boom, boom, boom. Uh -huh. It's bad. So, I mean, that that's the reality. And that's the part that I think if we did talk about that more, then I don't think people would quit as soon. Because I think what happens, if, especially if you look at just the amount of businesses that fail their first year, oh, yeah. I think they don't realize that that first year is like awful. I mean, that first year is, is you're, you're, gonna, you're questioning everything mm -hmm. at every turn. You're like, okay, is this even worth it? Because you're exhausted. You know, you're not seeing the money come in that you thought because you thought, you know, you were just gonna plug it in like a machine and it was yep, just gonna be like, switch. bam, you know, and it's not like that. So you're questioning, are you good enough? And then, of course, all the little voices come mm -hmm. in. Well, you shouldn't have even tried this. All you did was waste money to start this and yep. just go get a job or, you know, whatever. All your voices are in your head. And, you know, the, the idea that so many people quit so soon, I think, is one of the driving forces for me as far as trying to help people to know that it's okay that you want to quit. I mean, there was times that I would go home and I'd go in my room and I'd sit on my bed and I would like ugly cry. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh, I yeah. can't do this anymore because you it's know, done. I was exhausted and I was frustrated and you know, I was on my side killing myself and you know, clients don't understand a lot of times because you know, they don't get to see the back workings. I mean, mm -hmm. and that, that's like that with any industry. I mean, well, think about what you're all trying to balance. They don't understand yeah. the backside of what you do yeah. and the volume of clients you have, not just even that, I mean, that's no excuse in that respect, but I mean, the volume of work that goes along with each client, and if every one of them wants you to hold their hand in the way that yeah. possibly they do, if they could look at it that way and say, I have 62 clients that all want me to hold their hand. Yep. And I have one I, client right yeah, now. Yeah, I have two hands. <laughs> daily. I have two hands. <laughs> <laughs> you do the math. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I mean, it is, well, it's like that with any industry, if you think about it. I mean, we're all so quick to judge. I mean, how many times have you gone to a restaurant and it takes forever for you to get seated? Yeah, you know, right. and then you go sit down and it takes forever for the waitress to come. Yeah. And then, you know, your food takes forever to come. And well, again, I think that's that instant gratification. Yeah. Everyone wants it now. And, and they don't realize, and I have waitressed, so I, yeah, I can come yeah. from the other side, that they they probably are short, you know, grill cooks. And yeah. somebody didn't show up and they've got customers that are screaming at them and mm -hmm. they're tired and exhausted because maybe they've got a baby that kept them up all night. I mean, yep. there's so many things that go on that we're so quick to kind of jump and say, oh my gosh, this sucks, you know. And it sucks for me. Yeah, it sucks for me. I, I've been inconvenienced and, uh -huh. you know, 
that, you know, that was one of the things that started, that I started to see when we were kind of all like quarantined in our own homes and nobody could do anything is that, that I started to see um, a little bit of that going away. There was more understanding. I feel like it's starting to go the other way now because everybody's like gone back to their, their, you know, kind of normal. Yeah. But during that time, I was watching a lot of stuff going on on social media and there was so much understanding. I was like, oh, well, maybe this is like the world <laughs> healing, you know, oh, uh-huh. you know, but. Blessing in disguise. Yeah. Oh, I, I, in I some know. ways, I think it I think was. It has, yeah. I really do. Well, there are things that like, I think, uh, I think I was talking to my mom. Her and I had this conversation. Like, there are things that have been implemented during this time that I hope don't go away. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, there, you know. I, and I'm, yeah, I'm like, I kind of like that. Let's keep this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, well, like the idea of people being able to work from home, even if you are the person that, you know, works for somebody else, mm-hmm. it's a lot of pressure. Um, that was one of the things that kind of prompted me to go out on my own in the marketing work, because I always did the wellness, but I, you know, I needed to make more money, so I worked for somebody else in the marketing world for the longest time, mm-hmm. until um, I had my 11-year-old son, who's autistic, and you know, it's, it's hard enough with a kid that's not on the spectrum and having a kid on the spectrum, you never knew what kids you were waking up with. Mm-hmm. So he would have hard, hard, hard days. And, you know, I've, I've shared a lot about this as well. Just having a special needs kid is isolating. It is so isolating because it's hard for somebody that's not in that world to understand that understand world. It. I mean, they feel sorry, which nobody wants to feel. You know, I don't want anybody to feel you sorry pity, for me. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't want pity, you know, uh, but, you know, to have somebody understand is like, wow, it, but, it, you know, I would have meetings at, you know, 7 a.m. Well, if he was having a bad day, that meeting wasn't going to happen. And that was just like, it was so stressful, so stressful. And finally, I was like, okay, I'm just going to have to quit. I'm going to have to quit. And I ended up quitting, and I was not sure what I was going to do, honestly, Mm -hmm. because I was like, ah. Because, I mean, we, like most people, you build your life on the money you make. You know what I mean? (laughs) So we had built our life, and we have a 1,000 kids. And, you know, I'm like, okay, well, you know, what am I going to do? So I just started freelancing. And, um... I never planned it to be a business. It was, you know, when my account was like, okay, you're going to have to figure out, you're either going to have to run this like a business or you're like, I'm like, all right. So I started thinking, you know, what is it that I want to do? Because I, I, as you know, as a freelancer, I was like, oh, you'll pay me to do that? Okay. Sure. So, I mean, there was no you're like, whatever, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was no like design on what I wanted to do. Especially there was no with plan. seven kids in LA, no. you're doing whatever Yeah, you I was, can. oh, yeah. I did everything. I mean, I did so much stuff. I was like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. And if I didn't know how, I would watch a bunch of videos mm-hmm. and figure it out and give them a discount. Well, you'll be my first person I've ever done this with, so I'm going to give you a deal on it. But yep. I, I learned a lot of skills doing it like that, too, um, that I, really has helped me in the long run. But I know whenever I decided to kind of start with my business, I wanted to make an impact. That's always been, like, me and Sharon talked about this the last time that we recorded, is that if you dig back to the core of who I am as a person, I've always mm-hmm. wanted to help. Mm-hmm. And it's just, just that helping. So you can look at it from the wellness angle, I want to help. And from the business angle, I just want to help. Yeah. And because, you know, they say, uh, teach what you didn't know or needed to know and be who you needed. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of, if you had to dig back to what my core concept is, no matter which business you're talking mm-hmm. about, it's that, you know, I want to be able to be kind of that person to say, don't give up, you know, or maybe it is, okay, this is a terrible, I, I have said that to people, this is a horrible idea. Yep, I know that yep. you're set on it, but let's not. Well, I think I can agree with you there with, you know, people always ask me like, what, what do you see yourself as? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's, you have no idea. That's all over the place. But I think if I dig back, the one word, I guess I always consider myself is, is teacher. Yeah. But like, I, I'm not in education, yeah. you know, my mom is a, you know, fourth grade school teacher, but I'm a teacher in a different aspect. And, um, you know, one of the podcasts, of course, is, is something I listen to a lot. And um, one of them I listen to is the Dave Ramsey Show, which is a, a finance related uh, podcast. But and that's what he says. He's like, look, I'm a teacher. Yeah. And, and people call him all the time and say, you know, I'm a teacher. I only make this much money. How can I get more? How can I, you know, raise my income? And he's like, well, I'm a teacher, you know? And, and I think for me, that's like when he first said that, I said, oh, you know, holy crap, I'm, I'm a teacher. You know, that's yeah. what I want to do. Um, and I think that goes back to the helping people. And, and you, learn, you learn from your mistakes, but I, you know, I learned from my dad's mistakes. Yeah. You know, because yeah. as growing up, I was watching that. I was seeing that. Um, He's told me stories about things and, and, you know, you definitely, you should learn from your own mistakes for sure. Not everyone does, but you should. 
Um, but I think there's opportunities to learn from other people's mistakes also. Oh, I agree. Um, and that's really, I mean, that's essentially what I, what I want to do, what I do, you know, and that's the whole idea behind, you know, perpetual motion is founded on never stop moving. Mm -hmm. um, like that's my my tagline or whatever with and, and that works in marketing your business or your brand yeah. or whatever that is fitness or you know the travel it, it just in general it's you know you never stop moving um, whether you hiccup and, and or you go down into the ravine it you know it doesn't matter you just okay what's next you know yep. what's the yep. next how do I how do I move on from this um, and I think that's I think that point right there is what in my opinion I know we all define our own success and I say mm -hmm. that a lot um, I can't define your success I can't define Sharon's success I can't define anybody's success yep. you know it yep. goes back to your values and your priorities but my definition for myself of success is is not stopping you know mm -hmm. is you know when I trip and fall and like you said fall down a ravine and burst into flames and I drag <laughs> yeah. myself up the other side uh, you know bleeding I'm like all right well that's you'd sucks. be the person to come back as a zombie <laughs> yeah and start I would the I mean that's that's just I mean that's just how it goes I mean you know I you know, I'm not the give up type of person now I've said it like like I said I've, I've had the day where I go home and I'm oh, bawling yeah. and crying and I'm just exhausted and tired and I, I'm done at that moment but I'm only done for that moment yeah. I can't just quit now that being said, you know there are times where it becomes evident that whatever dream you're chasing, it just doesn't fit. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you have to know how to realize, and that takes time and experience. But you have to know when to realize, okay, is this just part of it? Is this the climb, yeah. you know, to get there, or is this something that I'm trying to shove a round peg into yep. a square yep. hole? And I think that's where, first of all, I think that's where reset comes in. Yeah. The whole mindset there. I mean, we mentioned earlier. Um, but also, I think that's where surrounding yourself with other people comes in. You know, that, that core group that's willing to kind of speak truth into your life that says, yeah. you know, hey, this, you'll get through this. You know, keep yeah. moving. You're, you're almost there. I can, I can see it for you. Yeah. Um, or, you know, them being able to be honest with you to say, hey, you're chasing your tail. Quit wasting your time with this. It's, uh, yeah. you know, it's not yeah, Take possible. a step back. We need to take a yeah. step back and reevaluate what you're doing so you're not wasting time and, and money and effort and, yeah. and emotions. I think that's been a big lesson for me. That was probably the hardest lesson for me to learn is sometimes stopping. Yeah. Because, you Always. know, if you, yeah, if you put yourself in that mindset where you don't stop, because I've been like that. I've, I started working when I was 14, too. By the time that I was 17, I had three jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just that's been my mentality. And, but just because you're running, doesn't mean that you're actually going to get anywhere. I mean, for so many years, I was just on a treadmill. I mean, yep. I was busting my ass and I was cranking it out and I was getting and it was on an nowhere. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I was dying. You know, I was like, oh, I'm getting somewhere. I was getting nowhere. And, and I you hop off and you realize yeah. you're in the same, yeah, dirty the basement. same spot, you know, and I just couldn't figure it out for the longest time. I would watch other people that seemed like everything comes so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd even make jokes about it. And I mean, really, it hurt me, but I would make jokes about it saying, okay, well, they just like are floating around on a cloud of awesomeness and I'm like tripping and burning mm -hmm. over here you know what it made me mad because it just like seemed like everything comes so easy to everybody mm -hmm. else and I think it was because I was on the treadmill and I wasn't yeah. on the path I was supposed to be on because it, it does get easier and you know going back to the hardest part for me was the pausing you know the stopping that I make myself stop now mm -hmm. I make myself even if I don't want to you know even if I'm like oh I gotta get this done this done I actually schedule it in and I have to schedule yep. it in I do too. I have to I have to schedule it in and I'm one that I'm very outdoorsy so I make sure I'm like hey, kayaking and hiking and I'm outside and yep. you know I can breathe and I can think whenever I'm out there yep. and that allows me to kind of think about again what am I doing because you know for so long what I was doing it didn't it's not that it was bad. It was it was great for somebody that didn't have seven kids and somebody that mm -hmm. didn't you know didn't have my life. But I have my life, and I didn't want to give up my life. Yeah. So I needed to alter my trajectory to say, okay, well, this needs to align with what my life is, mm -hmm. not what somebody else's life is. You know, and I think that was the biggest thing is being able to stop and say, okay, well, I need to nudge this over a little bit to be able to think and kind of piece that out. And it seems silly that pausing was the hardest part but it was mm -hmm. but it's made the biggest impact to be able to stop and think and again I'm, I'm the jumper so that that's, that, that's like the opposite of my first day yeah happen. yeah so but now I make myself and yeah. you know but even if I come up with a new idea which I do like as, as you all know like every second almost you know I write it down I have a notebook just for ideas mm -hmm. and I write it down and I you know put that in there we'll look at it later pile and sometimes I look back and I'm like okay that's the dumbest thing I've ever thought in my entire life and sometimes I go okay well that goes to another time I've got two 
two of them. One's uh-huh. kind of like a brain dump, and one's like, okay, well, this might actually have some at merit at some point. But, you know, I used to, I would just chase it. I would just jump and chase and jump and chase mm-hmm. and jump and chase and, again, stay on that treadmill and, you know, get nowhere. So I was, I was trying to find that easy that I mm-hmm. thought everybody had, you know. <laughs> well, and I think that goes back to what we mentioned earlier with no one tells you about the bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All you see is the good things, and then you jump like that because – I want it good, I want it good, I want it yeah. good. And, and, you know, if you actually spend the time to, to talk to those people or, or speak with those people about, hey, how did, how did you get to the good stuff? They're going to tell you the, the decade yep. prior that, you know, that it was not good stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, that, that middle section that we mentioned that you never read about or you never yep. hear about. <laughs> yeah. It's because no one talks about it because no. it sucks. <laughs> it did. It sucks. I don't even want to think about it. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I think that's the same thing. I think it, there's some things that I'm glad that I got out of and jumped to something else. But there's some things it's like if I would have stuck it out, it would have been good. But I was so afraid that it was a terrible idea because mm-hmm. it, it wasn't like instantly amazing. Yep that I would, you know, pass it on and I would... Or no one loved it as much as you yeah. loved it initially. So you're like, oh, well, this is not going to work. Yep. And, you know, I heard somebody, I don't remember what podcast it was, so if you hear this, I'm not stealing your info, but <laughs> um, I heard this the other day where they were saying that, you know, they didn't even realize in the moment how amazing something actually was. Because they never paused. <laughs> they never paused. And uh-huh. they look back and they're like... Wow, because now they've you know they've been out in the business world long enough, and they've they've been through the gamut, you know, and you know they look back and like, wow, okay, I actually was like rocking it when I mm-hmm. felt like I was drowning, I felt like I was failing at everything, I felt like I was sucking it, and I mean I literally almost quit yep. To, yep. and went back and got a job. I was I was I was right at the cusp, and I see that now. Yep. And sadly, I stepped. Week I yeah. Had a break or, yeah. You know. And I mean, and, and I think that happens a lot. And I think that's why it's so sad to see a lot of these businesses just go under. Because again, most of it happens in the first year, and that first year is it's it's. Yeah, especially if you try to start a business this year. Yeah. Oh yeah, this <laughs> well, year is a whole different ballgame. I, I think one of the biggest things I've seen, having done business consulting from, well. Basically, every all my years in banking, you technically do business consulting with your clients. But I mean, doing nothing but business consulting from 2005 up until 2016, when I became more of a confirmed business consultant in Google. I think one of the biggest things I saw is that I would say, "Do you have a performa?" And people look at me like I do two heads and go, "What's a performa?" And I said, "What's well, an accounting process where you create." Um, this is what I need to make. This is versus my expenditure so I can keep the company alive. And then what does that look like from a year out, two years, three? And I sometimes I, people just didn't even know what their costs were immediately. Yeah. And, you know, we know how much that can kill a business. Oh, yeah. Because you can't just throw a number out there, excuse me for saying this, but out of your ass, yeah. if you don't have anything to back it up. And, a lot of people don't factor in taxes into that. They don't factor in how am I paying myself. You know, they may look at it and say, oh, okay, well, if I charge this, I've got six hours into it, so I'd still make pretty good money. And then all of a sudden, their six hours became 12, and they're like, wow, I just went from making $30 an hour to $15 Which a lot of times it will go to me. I, well. I literally could have hired a college kid for $13 an hour, yeah. and it would not have been my time. Yeah. yeah. I do a lot. I I I'm beginning to dabble in real estate, and I, I mentioned that my, my father does some uh, some real estate stuff. So him and I are running numbers on this property that I was looking at investing in, um, and we, we were talking about, you know, how many years until you get your money back? You know, what's that initial investment versus how much are, you know, the rental properties? So how much are you renting them for? What's the monthly thing there? And, you know, you run all the numbers, and then you're like, okay, that's perfect. You know, in a perfect world, that happens. Yeah. But you don't have 100% occupancy. Nope. And then you have you can damage. Maybe you have maybe plan for 80. Yeah. What are your maintenance fees? What are yep. your property taxes? What's your, you know, your mortgage payment? What's all the, like, you know, and then what's your interest rate? And there's all this stuff that comes with, you know, that, that particular aspect. You've got it on whatever industry you're in, mm-hmm. whatever business you're running. Um, and that's where I think I'm, I'm always going to go back to talking to people that know what they're talking about. Yep. Um, you know, I have People a, have a been mentor there. of mine that has real estate, and then obviously my, my father is as well. But when I was in Terre Haute, um, 
I had a couple mentors in different aspects, and one uh, one was in real estate. Um, and I, you know, I talked to him a few times about what's what's this look like, and, and you know, someone that can actually that you trust enough to take their opinion, and they trust you enough to be able to tell you when you're screwing up or mm-hmm. when that's a dumb idea and they're not going to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Um, you know, those are important. Those are probably the most important people to have in your life. I yeah, agree. I agree. I think you have to have a trusted advisor in in your parents and your business owners and. You know, I, I know for myself, I've had many mentors over the years, just like Brandon was talking about, and sometimes those mentors are the person who's going to look at you and say, this is insane. Yeah. I mean, like we said, stop. Yeah. You know, and I've had a, one of my mentors that I had when I lived up in Indianapolis, great guy, was a business consultant for 25 years, knew that I was doing it, partnered with him on a project, and I learned so much about being a better business consultant and a lot of it was just like actually having a list of things that we were guaranteeing that we were going to provide to the client in a time frame upon which that was going to happen at the time I was the first year into doing business consulting I was doing well making good money but I didn't have a good process down I think process is sometimes one of the things that's missing for a lot of people too oh I agree and I think it's because it's it you know, when you're thinking about it from the outside, it's hard to explain exactly what you do mm-hmm. because to you, you it's, it's so different all the time. But you have to almost do it at kind of like a 30,000 foot view. You know, they don't need to know every single detail, you know, every keystroke. And I think that's where people get lost in the weeds. I've, I've seen it to where people get so in detail, you're like, what? Or like they give you nothing and, you know, you need to kind of find a happy medium there because, you know, as a consumer, and that's how I try to think of it, is as a consumer, what would I want to know? Well, and I use this analogy just for sales or for anything. If you know you're a TV salesman, which that doesn't exist anymore, but let's pretend <laughs> if you're a TV salesman, you know nobody cares about how you know the wires are put together in the back. You know they don't care. There, you might have that one person out of you know hundred thousand that actually is like, wow, how's that put together? Most of the time, they just care about you know what does the picture look like? How, you, does it have a remote? You know all the they high care level if they details. They see the wires. Yeah. But outside of that, yeah, yeah. they don't yeah. they don't care yeah. where what hooks up where. You know what I mean? That's that they just don't care. So I mean, and that's kind of how you've got to think about how you. I mean, you're very excited about your business, and you know a lot of times if you start to explain it to people, you go too much into detail. That scares you, them. Away. Yeah, it scares them. So, I mean, there is definitely a happy medium. You know, you want to, you know, be up front and um, explain what, you know, if you're a consultant, you know, what they can expect. But, you know, don't try to get lost in the weeds, especially especially with consulting. And obviously, as a consultant, I can say this. You know, sometimes I don't, I don't even know what we're going to get into. You know, the way I explain to people is mm-hmm. the way that I do consulting. And this may not be like everybody does, of course, but I come in like a reporter. I want to figure out what's going on. I want to come and find the story that you don't even realize that exists. I want to find the good story, the bad story, the in-between story. I want to figure it out because a lot of times, and I can say this for myself too, it's so hard to see your own mistakes, your own your own successes, your own everything, that you need that outside person to come in and kind of dig through all the jumbled words yeah. and find it. And I don't know that, um, I, you know, I can't really speak from a consulting standpoint. I haven't done a lot of that. but there's a lot of external factors that factor in when you're doing businesses. So, you know, you can go into a business and say, what's your business story? But I think unless people are willing to open up about their personal stories, yep. it's hard to really see a lot of, you know, what's going on in your business because it is so heavily correlated with what's happening in your personal life. Well, and, and I think that goes back to what we were talking about, about layers, about yeah. how my generation kept everything separate. It was just very much understood that you just yeah. don't mix or, you know, or work and personal. Or attempted to keep it yeah, separate. Yeah, attempted, that's a great, yeah. yeah, that's a great analogy. But I, I think that's the opposite of what you actually want to do because, you know, people want to see that real. They want to see the personal, it's more trustworthy. Yeah. You know, they want, if, if it's just all perfect looking all the time, it's less trustworthy because mm-hmm. we know nothing's perfect all the time. So, you know, it needs to have that humanness to it. That doesn't mean that, you know, you want that you want to be like showing like that you're screwing things up all the time. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be kind of careful. I mean, but maybe sometimes it's it's gotta be kind of one of those things that if you screw something up and you decide you wanna be real and transparent about it yeah. and teach somebody else a lesson, then do it. Well, I think that personally, I, that, I mean, that's how I do it. Yeah, you know, me that's too. how I, 
like, hey, I screw up this order, and yep. I always make it right. Yep. You know, I always say, look, I, I messed up, and I had a, I had a customer wreck with my firewood business that, um, I was I was gone, mm-hmm. um, I was I was out of town or something, so I had my little brother, I paid him to load the wood up so yep. that when I got home, I could just take it right over to the client. Well, he loaded it up, and I didn't even look at it. Right, I was like, okay, we're out of here, and I dumped it. And this was one that I, um, I just needed to dump it for him. I didn't have to stack it up or anything, so I dumped it. A couple days later, he, he sends me a text and he says, "Hey, I just uh, stacked it all up, and we're like, we're a little bit short here on this." And he sent me a picture of it. And uh, you know, I asked Ethan, I was like, "Where did you, you know, my, my brother Ethan?" I said, "Where did you get this wood from?" And it turned out that it was it wasn't a full rick that he he kept, took from, and there was like three in it, so he ended up getting like two and a half when he ordered three. Um, and I, I like, look, I was like, I honestly, I paid someone else to do it. I paid my brother to do it cause I was gone and I just brought it over and didn't even look at it. It's my bad. I took him a full load, yeah. you know, to make it, to make it right. And plus his inconvenience. Um, but that's something I was open, you know, open about it. And from that day on, he ordered from me for another like four years until yeah. basically until I shut it down. Um, because he's like, look, I appreciate you being real with me. And I, you know, people make mistakes. It happens, yeah. you know? So, and, and it wasn't like it was a make a break thing it was just part of it so um, I've always kind of tried to be tried to be upfront and honest and it is what it is I made a mistake and own up to it and move on so well and I think that's important to do that because you know I know I've made plenty of mistakes and every single client that I have has as well <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. you know it's and if you would have come up with some kind of BS excuse you know, he probably would have been like, eh, I don't know about this guy. Well, they would have called my bluff yeah. and, and not work for me again yep. or something, you know. And it's just, it's better to be real and it's better to say, you know what, I screwed up because, I mean, it happens. You know, you can overlook something or, you know, be late on a deadline or miss a deliverable or, you know, whatever it is, you know, depending on your business. Yeah. It just, it can happen. It's just, the idea is be real and, you know, try to make it right. You wouldn't believe how many times, and I say this, it really kind of knocks on myself, but um, in, in college, I miss deadlines all the time. Yeah. You know, I was I was heavily involved in my last two years. You know, obviously I was I was working with Extend, um, but I also worked at GNC and I also worked on campus. Yeah. So like my last two years, I was working three jobs plus I was a full time student up until my last semester. Um, so like yeah, I I miss deadlines. I hate to say it frequently, but but enough more <laughs> often than not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh. You know, that's, I was always I was always up front with professors and like, hey, look, you know, was it my my grandma didn't die? I just missed the deadline. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and they, you know, m- the majority of the time, of course, you've always got some outliers, but the majority of the time, they were like, look, life happens. Yep. You know, you I get it. You work three jobs and you overslept and missed the deadline. You you overslept and missed class. I, yep. You know, whatever it is, life happens. And and. They make this like I had a professor that sent us all an email one time, and said uh, that I forget exactly what it was, but basically she'd overslept. Yeah. And didn't come to class, and so like an hour later we all get an email that says she overslept, and we we're like, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. We've all done it here too. <laughs> yeah. So it was yeah. it was interesting that you know everyone always sees you as a you're much more personal if you're if you're actually you. Yep. Um, and people follow you because you're you or people do business with you because you're you not because you're perfect exactly and that's one of the things that I taught on a lot is and it's because I've had to learn it myself is you know really developing your personal brand it doesn't matter if you work for you know a company or you own your own business or you know whatever you you need your business brand obviously but you need your personal brand who mm-hmm. are you as a person and if there's multiple people within your business who are they because You know, we all know that we do business with people that we know, like, and trust. And, you know, that kind of makes it hard if you're trying to reach more people than is kind of in your, you know, hometown. You know, so (laughs) if you develop your personal brand, they kind of get to know you. You know, they get to know what makes you tick. What do you like? It's a lot easier now. Yeah. Um, You know, like my YouTube channel, you could reach millions of people on, you know, via YouTube or or social media in general. Like, um, you know, whether it be Instagram, who, you know, I'm very open about my life mm-hmm. on, on both things, you yep. know, and uh, on both platforms. And so it, it was, it's much easier now to be personal at a, at a larger scale than it was I agree. 20 years ago or I agree. whatever. But um, I still think a lot of people are not utilizing that. No. And you I know. think a lot of people hide it. Yeah. You know, I they think do. a lot of people on, 
you know, they because YouTube you can edit and, and yeah. clip out the, the bad parts, so to yeah. speak, um, or because Instagram you only post the best picture, yeah, you lose a lot of that personal. Um, and then I don't, and that's why I like video because, or, or podcasts like this, when you mess up. Yeah. You mess up and yeah. you know, you move on. But yeah, but you have to think about is it really a mess up? Because yeah. it happens to everybody, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> it's it's part of life, it's part of learning, it's part of living and you know, I'm 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 like you. I'm very personal on all of my, you know, um, business accounts. I mean, actually on the podcast account, I am frequently talking about my relationship. I'm frequently talking about my yeah. kids and what kind of crazy crap they're doing and how they're <laughs> driving me insane and they you know, how they're yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm super real because you know, I do have a lot of people that follow that are also moms and business owners. And, yeah, yeah. you know, they, they don't want to hear that you've got, you know, the schedule for all summer made out and, you know, 45 <laughs> million snacks pre-planned. And, you know, Just they don't want to hear all that. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want it to. I mean, not that that stuff's bad inherently. It just makes you feel less. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, you know, she's got she's got her life together. What yeah, am I doing with mine? Exactly. <laughs> So, and and there's enough of that on there. There's that, I I tell this to people, like I went through my, and I still like Pinterest and I'm building out my Pinterest right now. I've just been very, I've I've been hesitant about finishing building it out because I'm telling you, Pinterest about effed me up at one point in time because I was trying to be that perfect everything because Mm -hmm. I felt like if I, if I couldn't, then I wasn't enough. And this is talking about as a woman, as a mom, as a business owner, as everything. All the hats you wear. Yes. I was, I was comparing myself to all of this perfect of everything. And I got to the point that finally I actually canceled my Pinterest account because I was like, okay, this is not healthy for me. This is not healthy for me. And I've been told on more than one occasion, you need to start a Pinterest account up. And I've, I did start one, but I've been slow at building it out because it's almost like people that have been alcoholics, you know what I mean? And they're uh-huh. very scared to go to yeah. a party that has alcohol. Uh-huh. It's kind of like that because it put me in a bad place. And it sounds silly that something that, I mean, Pinterest isn't bad. It's great. I mean, there's recipes yeah. and there's all kinds of stuff. And But I made it bad. You know, you can make anything bad. Oh, wine yeah. isn't bad, but it is for somebody that's got a problem with wine. Yep. So, you know, I've had to kind of be careful about, okay. Yeah, you just have a glass big enough to put the whole bottle in so you don't have to worry about throwing something. Exactly. Through. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> but see, that's different because I, I don't consider myself an alcoholic. I yeah. am a social <laughs> <You're> drinker. <right. laughs> yeah. Social drinker. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I messed myself up. Like, I was not my best self. I was self-loathing. I had mm-hmm. lots of self-loathing issues from, you know, and I've talked about that on here too as well, from lots of stuff that went on, you know, when I was younger and, you, know, you carry all that stuff, you know, mm-hmm. back to, you know, you don't deal with Especially your baggage. You yeah, yeah, you bottle it up, don't deal with the baggage. And then, you know, it starts coming out. It came out in this, I thought I had to wear this mask. You know, I thought I had to be this perfect, I had to be this perfect mm-hmm. everything because, you know, quote unquote, everybody else was. But see, they wasn't. They were just showing their highlight reel. They were showing yep. like, yep. oh, this day I did this wonderful thing and the rest of the house is a shithole. But this corner I got done, let uh-huh. me take a picture of this so I can, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Because I, and I've, I've had people come to me and say, oh, you wouldn't understand because you've got it all together. I'm like, oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you have not looked at very much of myself because I'm pretty real. I do not have it even halfway together. You know, I, I don't think there is such a thing as to all together. I mean, there's not. You know, I there's hope not. no. I mean, there's. there's I, I don't want to be all together. No, though. there's things that I do and I do well, and there's things that I suck at, and I feel like you know, if I'm focusing on this over here, then that over there starts yeah. suffering. And I mean, it's like that with life. That's how it is. It's. You know, it's not this perfect balancing act. It's, you know, like right now, I'm here recording this and my 18 year old's babysitting. I'm gonna go home, my house is gonna be like hit. <laughs> it's gonna be hit, I already know it, I already know it. And I have to mentally prepare myself yeah. for that. Well, it's you like know? when I was, I was growing up, I have two brothers, one older and one younger. And all three of us are just as opposite as, as we could be. Um, you know, my, my older brother is very, you know, he doesn't touch computers. He barely gets on his phone type of thing, whereas that's my business, that's my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, my younger brother is very, he's very techy too. Like, he replaces my phone screen when I crack it type of thing. Oh wow, you know, wow. He's, super he's techy. Yeah, he's that techy, <laughs> like, you're over here messing with the podcast stuff and we're all yeah. confused by it and I like, was gonna call him and be like, Ethan, how do I do this? You know, he's <laughs> that level. Yeah. But Garrett doesn't touch computers, but if you're like, Hey, I need to swap, you know, put new injectors in my truck. Yep. He'd have the motor and the transmission out in, you know, a couple hours. Whereas it's going to take me 
days and weeks and then I'm going to take it to the shop anyway because I'm fed up with it because I don't know how to do it. Um, you know, and it's just something that growing up you're, and I hate, I hate that society is like this, but you're really judged on two things. You know, you're judged on school and you're judged on athletic ability. Yep. That's pretty much what you get Oh, in I school. agree. I agree. Um, and, and not to toot my own horn, but that came relatively naturally to me. I was always outdoors. Um, I enjoyed school. It was something, I enjoyed school as much as someone could, I guess. Um, but that always came natural to me, whereas Garrett was very hands-on and wanted to work outside, but didn't want to be behind a computer or reading yeah. a textbook or anything like that. Um, and he was athletic too, but still, that was you know that was just one of our differences. Um, so there was a lot of times where we disagreed, um, or or we had arguments, or or really fights even because uh, whatever happened to be the case, it was just two different personalities that were being judged on one thing. Um, and I always compared myself to that growing up. Like Garrett would go out and change his oil. And I'd be like, man, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Of course, now I do, but at the time, I was like, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Um, so I felt lesser than that, even though. And probably I had more so than as a, as a guy. Yeah. Well, in, in that perspective, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and of course, that's why I now taught myself to do that. Yeah. Um, but it's just a different, a different aspect, you know. And, and mechanically, I've come to the conclusion that like that's not my strong suit. Yeah. I would rather pay him to do it yep. than, and, and me do what I want to do and, and like to do yeah. and I'm good at doing. Um, and it's just, just two different people, you know? So I don't need to compare myself to exactly to those that are doing those things because, and I'm, I'm hoping they don't compare themselves to me working on, you know, in Google or in, you know, whatever I'm doing, flying the drone or, or you know, whatever the case is. Um, so I'm hope, I, you know, I hope that's, that's something I came to the conclusion and realization of. It is very hard not to put yourself, like, at the standard you see, like, mm -hmm. your siblings. And Marie and I have talked about that a lot. I mean, because I had a brother that I'm not sure he ever really cracked a book to study. And, you know, I studied my tail off to be a C student. Yeah. And so, and it was it was hard because he and him being so close to age to me, I got even compared to him by the teachers, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it makes you struggle so much. Yeah. And, and I even hear it in my nephew. My nephew did not make it through college because it just was not for him. Mm -hmm. He has struggled to figure out where he belongs and just only recently became a personal trainer. And I think he's gonna be amazing, amazing at it. He's been working with me and I can't tell you the amount of times in my basement when he's been there helping me to work out to get myself in better condition. He tells me, well, I'll never be my sister. There's six years between them. Yeah. But she was a dancer, gymnast, you know, cheerleader, you know, good at school, yeah. got accepted every college she applied to, college mm -hmm. comes after her, she's going pre-med. And I said, but you're not her and you have to remember that. You have to be proud of who you are for yourself. Yeah. Faults and all, you know, I mean, I said to him, I mean, I said, I'm ADHD, I get where you're coming from most days, that you struggle. But he's finally got to the point now where he realizes, like I do, he has to take his medicine. And part of his problem is when he got out of high school, he thought, I'm independent, I'm on my own, and I'm not gonna take my meds because I just don't want to. And so, you know, he's grown up, he's matured, but he still has that same problem that I have. You know, he still has that sibling that he puts himself against and says, I don't measure up to. I never tried to measure up to what my brother was. Everybody else made me feel like I had to measure up to that. And I wasn't able to be myself. And I think that's one of the reasons why I have strived so hard as an adult, because I wanted to go back and show everybody that I didn't have to be him and I was still very successful. In my own path. Yeah. But it also made me be the person I am and make me be, you know, a person who never wants to sit still always trying to help even our clients to think of what's next for my business. You know, what, what can I be doing differently? What's working, what's not? We do it in on ourselves. We do it personally, we do it professionally. I mean, you know, Marie and I are getting ready to launch something really big here in July. And um, jokingly, we told Brandon that, you know, <laughs> he can mirror it on what he does. Because I'm not we're joking. Old. I mean, we're I'm old, being serious, you know? actually. Wait, you were yeah. joking about that? No, 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 I'm, well, honestly, I'm like, I'm not. But I mean, like, Marie and I are older, and Brandon is, is you know, just out of college. We can market to 
the same things that we're doing in different fashions. I feel like I'm being marketing. stereotyped by older. I feel like um, older. I feel like age is um, nothing but a number. I, so oh. I feel like um, I don't like the term older. Yeah, I can tell you as much as I want to be. Markets. Yes, different markets. I like that. This body doesn't cheer like it used to, and doesn't jump like it used to, and I've accepted that. So maybe now I'm thirty. Four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just I mean we we reach different markets in general. Yeah. Um, you know how many how many women mothers are listening to this podcast and how many of them are you know twenty two year old college grads yeah. male college grads yeah. who, who want um, to who not work for somebody else or, you know like what's you know, and that's just a different demographic that it when is. you yeah. guys you know launch you're gonna reach people that. I would reach other people, and yeah. that's what. And um, and like we have another uh, gal who is in our company who, you know, would like to do the exact like uh-huh. take and mirror what we're doing to her demographic, and she's thirty and single. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that goes back to developing your personal brand because you're going to naturally pull in people, yeah. you know, that are kind of like you or mm-hmm. you know whatever, and you're going to naturally repel the other ones, which is okay because that's not your target anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I mentioned to you earlier about um, how long term I want to start a gym. Yeah. Not necessarily because it's it's a money maker by any means, but because. Well, that's okay if you understand that. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marie doesn't have to talk to you about this. It's over. No, I know gyms just. Typically it's the maintenance. Don't make money. It's the yes. maintenance. Yes. Yeah. But it's Whew. because I want to put it in my my town, and I want yeah. to do training for the athletes. And I want yeah. to do special events where I can. It's something I'm passionate about, and I want to share that passion more so than make money as a business, which is why I haven't started it yet. Yeah. Because uh, I want to, I want to have my business yeah. and my lifestyle done, and then launch that on the side. That's the way to do um, it. Yeah. But I do have a friend of mine that is, um, getting his doctorate in physical therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know he is going to pull a demographic, and he's yeah. talked about renting, uh, a, you know, a space in the gym or the office next to the gym. And then training his clients or doing therapy for his clients in the gym. Yeah, and that then would the be therapy's smart. over, they stay as members and they yeah. stay moving and they stay. You well, know. and you ought to put a chiropractor in there. You ought to put a massage exactly. therapist in there. Exactly, and because got, they yeah. pull in different demographics. And a nutritionist. Like, I'm going to pull in the young athletes that mm-hmm. you know that want to build muscle or yeah. want to get you know get big for spring break type of thing. Yeah. Um, whereas he's going to pull in uh, you know the older people that need uh, mobility training yeah. and and you know that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you get someone to come in and teach, you know, teach a yoga class mm-hmm. uh, that pulls in a different demographic. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of the idea is you surround yourself with, with people that aren't your strong suit. Yep. Well, and it keeps it evergreen because the person that comes into you at, you know, 18, 19, you know, later on will be the one that he's coming to the therapy. I mean, like me, yeah. you know, I was the one that hit it hard and was doing MMA and doing mm-hmm. lots of things. And shoot, I can't do that anymore. My joints and <laughs> my everything else. Now I'm the person doing yoga because I, and I lift and stuff some, but yeah. you know, I can't do the things that I used to do. I want to remain physically active. So, and I explain this even to my clients on the, on the wellness side of things people try to do things the exact same way. We were talking about about marketing. You know, people try to do it the exact mm-hmm. same way forever. Well, it doesn't work the same. Yep. What is good for you at like 19, 20 is not going to be good for your 40. Ago, it it's now. just not. It just yeah. doesn't, you know, especially with women. That's a whole nother ball game. Your hormones get oh. into play. And, you know, I've, I've worked, actually, I just got done working with a girl that her hormones were so out of whack and she was having mm-hmm. fertility issues and, you know, just all kinds of problems. And I started working with her and I was like, okay, we're not going to want to hear this. I was like, but she was one of those that loved running, ran every day. And I was like, your body sees it as stress. I mean, stress is stress. Stress is stress is stress. Your body doesn't know the difference. So is it running's not inherently bad, but you're already having hormonal issues. Anyway, you going out there running five, 10 miles a day is going Mm -hmm. to further your hormonal issues. And that's causing, you know, so anyway, we, we kind of changed what she was doing Mm -hmm. and you know, she's, She's actually pregnant right now. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. it's just working with your body. You know, there, uh, mm-hmm. we think that it's just this, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four, you know. And it's not always that simple. Yeah. Well, I had, that, I had that, literally that exact conversation uh, with my aunt uh, a few days ago. We were out, uh, we were out on, on the boat. We did a camping trip this weekend. We were out on the boat on the lake. And uh, she had mentioned how, you know, since Corona hit, She's gained a lot more weight, but mm-hmm. her eating habits hasn't changed. Yeah. She's, you know, nothing's really changed, 
outside of the fact that she owns a bar and grill and they've been closed oh. and her stress levels are just yeah. through the roof. And I like, I was talking to her and she's like, I don't know, you know, why I, I can't lose the weight. You know, yeah. I, I've done the dieting before and I've just lost it again, you know, yeah. and then I go off the diet and I get it back. And, and she's like, I know that's the case. I know I mean, I'm okay with that. So this time I go on the diet and, it, and it's nothing's happening. I'm still gaining weight. And I said, well, how's your sleep and how's your stress? Yeah. And she goes, they suck. <laughs> and I said, well, there you go. You know, and, yeah. and people don't understand that that takes a toll on you. Well, it does. Um, from, a, from a wellness standpoint. But it does. Yeah. I mean, and th that goes right into a lot of the business stuff. Like, I ain't, again, I'll end up going in to consult somebody on all their business needs, and I find out that they're not sleeping, and, uh -huh. you know, they feel like crap, and they can't focus, and they got brain fog, and, you know, we end up kind of segueing, and I end up, you know, talking to them on yeah. a wellness level because that is, you can move the needle so much further when you feel good. Yeah. Well, and that's when I, so I was in a fraternity when I was in, in college. And uh, our, you know, our, our main thing was, um, you know, healthy mind, healthy body. Yeah. Um, and those are so correlated, you yep. know, and, and especially, especially from a male in college, you know, the healthy body part, like we're always in the gym, we're always working on that body part. Um, but the healthy mind is something that no one ever. Yeah. And I, say, I don't say no one, but lots of people. Stereotypically, yeah. you know, yeah. males don't focus on no. just in general, well, especially with other males. Yeah, they they um, see it as not masculine, and yeah, I think exactly. that's starting to go away a tiny it bit. Is. But yeah, it is, it's still there. Um, but it's it's a conversation that you have to have with with a lot of them. Yeah. Is, you know, hey, how are you? How are you sleeping? How's your stress? How how are you? Like yeah. I know I see you in the gym and you're you're doing good there, but how are you? Um, and that conversation. It's, I agree it's starting to happen, but hasn't happened enough yet. Well, and I think that that needs to be something you talk about because I know from you know my level, I talk to women because I'm a woman. You know, yeah. I can't yeah. say what it's like to be a guy. I can't mm -hmm. say, you know, because I've never been a guy. So, you know, I can teach what I know. I can teach from my experiences. I can teach from yeah. all the little layers of crap that I've been through and be like, you know, this is how I felt. This is how I dealt with it. And I've been through some crap. You know, I've shared that on this podcast. And... You know, it's it's kind of one of those things that it defines who you are, um, and not but not in the way that you think that you know the negative way because yeah. you I hear people say don't let it define you and I'm like eh, but do you not I want, want it to. yeah I kind yeah. of want it to not in the negative way but every single thing that happens in your life good or bad it kind of leaves a mark yeah. sometimes it's a scar you know sometimes it's a birthmark you know whatever it is but and, it's and there. hopefully hopefully that scar one day is just a good story yeah and I yeah. think that's the key I think is you know not using the negative terminology of let it define you. I mean, I agree, don't let it define you in that negative way. You know, don't let it you know, make you think you're lesser or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, learn from it. And the more that I talk about that kind of stuff, the more that I teach about that stuff, the less the scar shows. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds silly, but the less that all of those scars show. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because, you know, you talk about it and you share and you help and at that point, you're able to forget the painful part, and it becomes a positive story. Yeah, I always think of it like a uh, like an interstate, um, or I like to use the word detour. Yeah. Um, you know, I can take I can take I seventy all the way out west, you know, or I can take all these little detours and see. Like when we were well, when we were in uh, Colorado, we did from Colorado Springs to Grand Junction. We could have taken seventy from yeah. Denver to to Grand Junction. Or we went down to Colorado Springs and we took US 50, which is just a little detour, added a couple hours to the trip. But it was US 50, and actually there's there's drone footage on my YouTube um, of US 50, um, and it's like a three minute clip of just the drone flying because it was the most beautiful road I've ever driven. I'll share if you don't care. I'll share your yeah, link. Oh, I love it. That'd be good. I'll put um, it in the podcast. But that was the most beautiful road I've ever driven on, um, and we literally pulled over. I think probably five times in the three hour drive. We pulled over constantly and we've got the drone out because it was just amazing. Um, now, had we stayed on 70, yeah. we'd have never known that. And it added time to us and it wasn't that instant yeah. satisfaction of being at our destination. But the journey to do it and the detour that we took instead, you know, and, and it's not necessarily a scar or a bad thing in that case, yeah. but that's, that's kind of how I think about it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think, you know, I'll, if I have not, if I had not been through any of the stuff I've been through, I would not be literally the person mm -hmm. I am today. 
and I wouldn't know the things that I know. I wouldn't know the things not to do, or you know, I wouldn't know anything yeah. like I know now. And I wouldn't be the person. Wouldn't exist, yeah, the business wouldn't exist. It just your, it would have changed everything. Mm -hmm. And so you know, one of the things that I've I've done on a regular basis is on the show too, especially is just say you know if you go back and tell yourself you know a few things, what would it be? And you know, I'm not saying that because I would change anything about my life. Um, I wouldn't. But I say that mainly because somebody that's listening needs to hear whatever it is that mm -hmm. I've said. And, yeah. I, you know, I would tell myself, don't worry about what people think. You know, mm -hmm. don't, don't worry. When I quit giving a crap about oh, yeah. what somebody thought, yeah. I was like, it was like freedom, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, you should, you should hear some of the, uh, the comments that my mom gets. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm 22 years old, and I just graduated college, and I bought a camper, and I took it 6,000 miles across the country. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I spent two weeks on the road and, and you know, it was gone. And people are, you know, and mom's told me some things. People are like, you know, how, how can you let your, your, he's a kid. How, how can you let him drive 6,000 miles across the country? And mom's like, first of all, it's not up to me. He's 22 years old. Yeah. I had kids at 22 years old, you know. Yeah. So yeah. she's like, it's not up to me. But also, it, it's what he wants to do. You know, and, and he and it's it's I think it's amazing. Yeah, I mean I do. And she does too. I, Mom, I mean, both my parents fully supported it yeah. and, and love the would, fact that I, I did. Totally I can't wait for you to go again so I can see. What's yeah, next. I would the totally do footage. that. Yeah. <laughs> if I was single, I would be out there on the road like that too. Now I don't know that my well my twenty two year old self also had children, but let's pretend that the twenty two year old self didn't. I don't know that I would have even known again that I could have yeah. done that. Yeah. But, you know, maybe you're inspiring that person that maybe just feels stuck and blah yeah. and it fits in their lifestyle to go try to do something like that. Well, I actually, I tweak my lifestyle to fit that. Yeah. You know, coming out of college, I was faced with, do I, do I come full time and work for STEM? Yeah. Um, or do I go to Indy? And, I mean, I interviewed and I, I had offers from five or six different companies to come, to come work there, you know, a nine to five type of thing. Yeah. Um, salary pay and guaranteed money and this and that and the other. Um, some of them had housing options. You know, yeah. I could I could literally have signed it and known exactly what the next five years was going to look like. Um, or I could, you know, come with you guys. That that's very uh, flexible and very. We're still kind of in that stage of what do we want to be? What do we want to do? Yeah, where do we want to grow up? Um, yeah, and. But that lifestyle or that decision fits in that lifestyle that I wanted. Yeah. Um, and some people choose the other way. Some people decide what they want to do and then choose a lifestyle around it. People um, like some people like that security. Yeah. I don't know that I do. I get bored easy. See, that's my, my problem, that's my I personality is easy. I, you know, I know it's secure for some people, but that yeah. security actually mm. feels like a noose to me. Well, it feels and, like a straitjacket. I can't yeah. dream and. And, and not having that security, I think, pushes me. Yeah. You know, the fact that I don't know, and, you know, I hate to say it like this, but you yeah. don't know what, no, what you don't know. next month looks like, no, what but, next yeah. year looks like. Exactly. Um, and that's, I think, the idea why I, I wanted to own my own business is because I can decide what that next yep. year looks like. Yeah. Um, and if if I, you know, look back at the data and the, the analytics and say, hey, I'm not on track to hit that, what I'm picturing next year looking like. Yeah. A, I either pivot and reset, yep. or B, I, I, you know, push more into it and, and you know, decide, okay, I'm going to go all in because I'm not, I'm not selling enough to reach my, my yeah. goal or I'm not, um, you know, doing whatever it is to, to do that. And I think um, owning your own business is, is hard because you have to be your own boss and you have to tell yourself, go to work and do it. Yeah. Um, but it's very rewarding also. And, and like I said, you choose... You choose what you want to do. I look at my business like, and I've told this to Sharon, you know, reset's like another one of my kids. I mean, mm -hmm. it is. It's mm -hmm. because I dreamed it. I birthed it. I, like, went through the terrible toddler it. years. I yep. mean, it's just, like, it is. I like and that analogy. I mean, that, that's toddlers, how it is. Yeah. It's and, and it's gone through, like, it's gone through its teenage years last year, you know, where, you know, I didn't make a couple of, of the best decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't look far enough ahead. I jumped without mm -hmm. thinking, you know, and then that happens sometimes. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, and well, and, and I, I'm sorry, but I've been in enough businesses to know that it, I don't think there's a business out there that hasn't done that. And, but what I did was, you know, I, I learned from that, you know, and every single great decision 
you know, that I've made, I've learned from, okay, well, that worked, you know, check. And every bad decision I've made, you know, within my business and life, you know, I've been like, okay, well, that's really sucked. I'm not doing that again. again. Yeah, that hurt. But that's what, that's the, what you learn from it is, you know, how do I, you don't make that mistake again. No, you don't. And, you know, that's, I think that's the key. And I think that realness um when i go in to speak with consulting clients i mean i i tell i i'm always real with them i'm like listen i was like this right here that you're doing i was on that i about i made that same mistake and i've been there you do not and this is why you know because if i go in there like oh i've got it all together and i'm not and i've never made any mistakes it's like okay you know i'm not going to connect with that person they're not going to be real with me either so i'm not going to fully be able to help them if they're not being real back you know it's, it's it goes back to that 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 realness yeah my dad always used to tell me that, um, you know, he made mistakes with zeros behind him. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's, that's the truth. We talked you know? about and, that the other day. Yeah. 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 And he, you know, when I'm growing up, he's working three jobs. And, of course, he's got three boys at home. And he, yeah. you know, put mom through college. And um, it was it was hard. And, yeah. and I vaguely remember, because I was a young kid. So yeah. I, I remember bits and pieces of it. But then, of course, him just telling me the stories. And I'm like, you know, how do I, how do I, prevent that you know how do I make it to where my kids remember me before they're eight years old yeah you know that that I'm not I'm not literally sleeping four hours a night and going back to work yeah while I'm trying to start my own business and while I'm trying to do all these other things that um it's just it's just hard Uh, you know if he ever if he was the kind of person that wasn't real with me or wasn't you know told me what to do now that he knows but never told me the back end of it I would have been like, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to do it my way exactly. because I think it might be better. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not better. You no. Know? Well, and I think I think that's a, a good example of why parents, you know, not only business owners, but parents should be real. I'm, I'm real with my kids. My kids, yeah. I'm completely real with them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've got some teenagers right now. And, of course, the teenagers just are in that phase where they think I'm dumb no matter what. But I'm hoping that as they get past that teenage stage, yeah. that, it, you know, it's going to yeah. stick in there and ingrain in them because, you know, I, I have friends that, hide all that stuff, mm-hmm. hide their mistakes. And it's like, okay, well, you know, what are they gonna, <laughs> they're gonna have to make the same mistake to learn it. Yep, yep. I just let mine shine. I, I've told my kids stuff that a lot of my friends are like, why the hell would you tell your kids that? I'm like, so they don't go there. Yep. yep. Because, you know, can I stop them from doing it? Absolutely not. I don't care how big of a helicopter parent that somebody thinks they are, I mean, Mm-hmm. You're probably making it worse. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not a parent, I, so I can't I agree with say that. I know the st- I know the stuff that I got by with. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not. And hard. I know the stuff that because I was told not to, yep. I did just for that reason. Yeah. Well, now, if I'd have known the story behind exactly, it, exactly. That's that's what I was gonna say. Because yeah. you don't get a why. If you can't have a why, it's like oh, okay. Especially if you've got that personality, like uh-huh. I, like I've got, and you've like got, I do. <laughs> like yeah. I and mean, then I've have a few, several, more than several of my kids that have the same personality. Is that it's almost almost a challenge. It's like, uh-huh. oh, okay, really? Oh, don't do that. Yeah, okay, bet. <laughs> but, but you know, if if you give a reason, like you know, obviously you make your own decisions. You know, on a lot of things. Like I can't stop. I think I guess I'm like I can't stop everything you do. I mean, you know, they get rules and stuff based on their age. Da 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 da. But at the end of the day, I don't care what parents say. You can't actually stop yeah. them from doing Pretty stuff. Much. I mean, you can't. You can you, you can try to think that you're putting up every parameter known to mankind and kids are going to make mistakes and if you're hiding you know all the crap that you've been through you're really just doing them a disservice because yeah. they don't need to think you're God you know they don't need to think you're some angelic being that's never made a mistake they need to think that you're real and that the reason you're telling them that they don't need to do that is because of whatever the reason is yeah. well and I think also it allows your kids to and again I'm, I'm speaking from a you know not as a parent but um, I think your kids are more willing to open up to you yeah. If you're open with them, you know, if they're going through something, as a parent, you want to know that. Yeah. Um, well, sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> I guess I'll say something like, eh. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, I know, I want to know this, but just yeah, give yeah. me a moment. Go, go, just go, give go. me a moment. Just give me a moment to process. Yeah. Fair, okay, fair <laughs> enough. But you, you get where yeah. I'm coming from in the sense of, you know, there, there are certain things you don't want. You don't want your kids bottling up. Because no, like, you don't exactly. want to bottle up as, as personal because it's going to go into your business life. Yeah. You don't want your kids to be bottling up either. And being, being real with them allows them to be in turn real with you. Um, and I love how this went from extend to perpetual motion yeah. to wellness to, well, that's, to that's, that's how that's, that's how that is. It's not only you know successfully chaotic because we are telling people how to get through the chaos, but the whole podcast is halftime chaotic. It just yeah. it's very conversational. We just kinda we let it just flow. 
because honestly, that's how life is too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how life is. It's like you, you, you know, set out to do this and then somehow you're down the, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Well, you, you pivot and then yeah. you, you move mm -hmm. on. Yeah, then you don't even realize you look down, you're like, okay, I'm way over here somehow. How did I float down this <laughs> yeah. part of the river? You know? There's a compass that I don't get back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of how life is sometimes. But I'll make sure um, when this airs in the description, I'm going to put a link to um, Brandon's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. And um, you can check out all the cool stuff he's doing and live vicariously through him like I am. <laughs> so. That, maybe that's what I'll do. If I, if I survive my children, like, and that's a question mark at this point, but if I survive my children, um, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take a, like a, I don't know how long, but take a road trip and just travel yeah. Yeah. because, uh, yeah. I'll save all the, the best spots for, there you go. I'll, I'll make a list for you when there that you happens. Go. So yeah, because, um, that's, that's, that's actually, that sounds amazing. We are taking a road trip. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's, that's, you know, Brandon and I have kind of talked about that because I teach the Google classes and obviously right now we're doing them all online and I, I'll be honest, I don't have the same enthusiasm that I have when I teach the classes because I can't stand up in front of people and jump up and down, put my pom-poms in my hands and cheer and be a crazy lunatic. And she very much is that person. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, but you know, I want to get Brandon out there teaching the classes too mm -hmm. and because if he's going to be out there traveling and he's going to be out there speaking to young entrepreneurs, it's so important that they understand the power of Google, like the two of us understand the power mm -hmm. of Google, you're learning the power of Google. And, um, and you know, we become that advocate for all age groups, all different types of, of, you know, situations that people have that they're coming in from to get their business to the right point. As we've said, you know, using our past mistakes and yeah. learning from them so that they don't have to make them and, and using the proper mentally, tools, emotionally. Yeah. you know, knowing the proper tools. Cause that's, that's another thing as a uh -huh. new business owner, it's like, there's so much crap out there. Yeah. And I tried, I was like, well, give me one of these and two of these. And I mean, I didn't know I spent uh -huh. so much freaking money. I always joke about, um, so I, I, I drive a truck and we had to replace, I don't even remember what we were doing, but I was up at school and we were in the parking lot of right, right outside my apartment. And my buddy's like, yeah, I got some tools in my truck. And I, of course, had some tools in my truck. And we just kind of, like, pulled out what we had. And we yeah. were replacing this part. And, man, it was a uh, it was a sight to see. I mean, I'm sure people <laughs> were driving by like, man, what are these hillbillies doing? Yeah. Because we're in there with ratchet straps and, you know, <laughs> these tools that are clearly not the right things. Um, and then I, you know, I came home. And a friend of mine owns a shop uh, right outside of my hometown. And uh, we, we were over there doing some... Uh, some transmission line work and uh, I asked him I said you know what how long would it take you to, to get this part out knowing how long it took us the, yeah. the three of us that are mm -hmm. I'm not mechanically inclined at, you know as much but my one roommate literally races like they've got a 68 something and a 72 something and he races every single weekend on the drag, on the drag strip um, and my other roommate is very well mechanically inclined like my brother is so I knew what it took us three and I asked him, I said, you know, how long would it have taken you to do this? And he's like, well, here I don't really have the right tool for it. But if I was, you know, if I was at the shop or my old garage, I'd probably done it in 20 minutes. Oh, wow. And I ain't kidding you, it took us four hours. Yeah. It took three of us four hours to do yep. um, because we just we didn't have the right tool. Yeah. And um, well, no, that's true. Well, like when you first start your business, a lot of times, obviously, you're cash poor. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. so sometimes you might not be able to get that right tool and you just got to bootstrap it. You just, gotta, just, you know, you just like chug along. Yeah, yeah, you just got to chug along. But, you know, at a certain point in time, you're actually going to start going backwards. You're going to start losing money by spending more time mm -hmm. on using mm -hmm. the improper tool. And I think that's another kind of benefit of, you know, how real we are. You know, we, we've made the wrong decisions on even the tools. You know, we've tried a little bit of everything. And, you know, another thing is, you know, there is always going to be like, you know, the, the best of the best of the best. And a lot of small business owners can't can't go there you know they're so not at that point but with, you could yeah yeah and it's just strategically figuring out what tools will move that needle farther within your budget and I think that's where a lot of the Google work that extend does comes in is that you know it is crazy yeah. cheap to be able for, to for what yeah, it is. yeah to be able to move the needle like yeah. majorly your your return on the investment within Google is just astronomical really yeah. I mean as far I, there's no other platform there's no other uh, anything that you can say you know if I'm gonna build up my marketing budget 
the majority of my marketing budget I'm going to put into Google. And there's there's articles and there's I think Forbes came out with one. Um, October of last year. Yeah, it was like the number one thing you should put your money in yeah. in 2020 as far as a marketing budget yeah. is Google. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it talks specifically about the Google My Business page, that it was the most powerful marketing tool in 2020, and you better be paying attention yeah. to it. And yeah. it is, I mean, compared to other ways, it is so cheap. Even It's even cheaper, cheaper than billboards. Yeah. And billboards, essentially, Oh, we, we had that discussion <laughs> with a client the other day. Billboards are most of the time, unless you just got, like, an endless budget and you just have some money left over, yeah. you're like, why not throw this out there, too, you know, type of thing? No. You're not you're not doing yourself a favor because I I bet if they would actually again do what I say and create a separate number to be able to track the conversion it would be like nothing yeah. nothing it would be nothing I don't think I've ever called a number off of Billboard in my entire life I know for a fact I have so I mean it's it's kind of one of those things like you notice like oh okay cool you know but pfft, what are you doing because and that's, that's if you notice it with yeah all the other lights if you and notice it and, and you're driving and, and <laughs> your kids screaming in the back exactly and, like. I, no, I I agree with you. I don't think billboards are. But if I you're no, and if you're already on the computer though, and you're looking for something, and you know Google has the information and pushes that to you all, you're already there. Yeah. I mean, if you're driving, you see something on the side of the road. If it captures your attention, if you remember the number, if you even remember to try to dial it or look up the info when you yeah. get stopped, which is probably not going to happen because you're, especially you mentioned about kids. If your uh -huh. kids are in there, your brain cells have been sucked out before you get home. You're just ready to scream. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's if you remember all those things, then maybe possibly. But well, and and what's going to happen is you might remember one word yeah. of the thing. So yeah. you're searching like extend marketing partners hypothetically, and not that we would ever do this. But let's say extend marketing partners got a billboard. Yeah. You might remember extend. Yeah. So what are you going to do when you get home? Yeah. You're going to Google extend. Exactly. You know, and and if you're if our Google page wasn't built out, then there's no chance of you ever finding us. Yeah. At, I mean. And so the fact that you even have a billboard is great if they call that number or yep. email that email or remember the exact name. Right. But that chance is not. No, me. it's it's not. It's a, it's, it's a gamble. I don't think it's worth taking. It, you're better off taking yeah. those funds and pushing it to somewhere else. I like to take educated risks. Yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing. Like, I mean, I explain to people when I explain kind of marketing and all that, I, I think it's a lot like kind of playing the stock market, mm -hmm. honestly. And you know, a, a marketing expert, you know, or a marketing consultant, or whatever you want to say, it would be like the financial advisor. So you know, we're watching the market, and we're you know putting a little bit of your your marketing funds here and a little bit in there, and we're watching the numbers to see how you know the market's Which reacting. Better, yeah. yeah, and then if we see one's not working at all, we're going to stop putting your money over into that, and we're going to move it over here because that's how you move the needle. You move the needle by doing more of what's working. Yep. And if you don't know what's working, you're just like spraying you're and praying crap. Out. Yeah, you're you spraying, well spraying and praying. Spraying and praying. Yeah, spraying mm -hmm. and praying. Because I mean, that's it. Because you, you don't really know. And that's the bad part. And I know this firsthand again as a business owner is you're wearing so many hats, you do not have the time to mm -hmm. sit and watch that crap most of the time. So, you know, and I, I know at the very beginning, it, you know, you might not be able to hire somebody in to kind of do that because you might not have the funds available. Yeah. But it's, uh, and I tell this to people, I'm like, you don't have the funds. I get it right now. I was there. But as soon as you do, this needs to be something that you do because right, right. it's going to move your needle yeah. so right. much more quickly. Yeah, and I think one of the things that a lot of people look at is they say, you know, oh, Google's so big, you know, like, you know, yeah. It's well, got to be expensive because it's yeah, so big. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's the biggest thing that people have to understand is, you know, Google is big. Because of that, you can't oh, ignore them. You need to, yeah. You know, and last year, I say this, you know, I tell this to people all the time, and they're always really shocked, is in May of 2019, Google stopped searching the World Wide Web for information about your business. They looked at the knowledge panel, which gets searched four times or more than your website does to bring people to your business. Then and then they look at your website. Yeah, you don't touch your website on a daily basis. You don't even touch your website on a weekly basis. But Google My Business has the opportunity to build out basically like your website and post like you do on Facebook. It's almost like the best of both worlds stuck in a place that gets ninety two point eight searches a day or something insanely so crazy cool, like yeah. that. Well, and I know you know. I always tell people just as far as like, you know, especially when I'm teaching like a social media and stuff that, you know, social media is pretty much like the handshake. So th that's mm -hmm. how you, you say, hey, I'm, you know, Maria, nice to meet you and this is who I am. 
and then you know your website you know tells a little bit more about your information but your Google your Google is like all your contact information it's everything it's everything pulled into one card. yeah it's literally yeah your business card it's everything pulled into one and you know that is something that if, if you can get all of those platforms you know working together and Google's how you do that if you can get those all working together you have increased your search yeah like exponentially when we started extend our tagline was it's your first impression to the world yeah of your business and I still it's not our tagline I, I don't even know we really have one right now but I mean I still believe that that Google's your first impression to the world of your business and you better take some time to make it look good even if you get a referral Yep. If that person doesn't have your telephone number, they go, oh, you know, it's it's yeah. Mark's oh. Mowing Company. Just Google them. Yep. Well, I have a friend that owns Mark's Mowing Company, and they have no Google page or yep. social media. Yeah. And so, you know what? They just probably lost the business because unless they run into their buddy again to say, hey, by the chance you have Mark's Mowing Company's number, uh, you're in trouble. You better call Mark. Tell him. Hey, you, you better figure out where in the world Mark is. Yeah. Uh, I've had a conversation with Mark's wife two weekends ago. <laughs> Well, you might want to call again and just tell him he's on a podcast now. Just so you know. <laughs> hey, we called you. You better fix it. And listen, we can call the people in Cincinnati, uh, search Mark's mowing. Yeah. They're not going to find it. They're not going to find it. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> Poor Mark. <laughs> Maybe he'll take a hint. Yeah. 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 Just send him, a, send him a copy of this whenever it airs. Yeah. So if anyone here is named Mark. Uh, <laughs> you know who you are. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and wrap this up, but I'll put the info in the um, in the description. And it was great chatting with you all, and we'll probably do this again um, yeah. soon. So. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. All right. Peace out. <laughs>